Sandra Bookman, and here and now, we'll be right back. She could sing it all. Blues, jazz, R&B, gospel. We're talking about Nina Simone, whose given name was Eunice Kathleen Wayman. She was passionate about the messages in her music and about the fight for civil rights. The off-Broadway play, Little Girl Blue, explores the life of the singer, songwriter, and activist. I got a boy who ain't got no little eyes of pain. I got a boy who ain't got no little eyes of pain. He got right down on me. Joining us today, lead actress and playwright, Leona Michelle, along with lead producer, Rashad Chambers. So nice to have both of you here today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm going to kick off with you, Leona, since you are definitely the star of the moment. I, I feel like this play really is a labor of love for you. Talk to me about the inspiration. Oh, boy. Uh, this play is indeed my passion project. Mm -hmm. It's a labor of love. It's, it's heavy lifting, um, but I'm prepared to, to step up to the plate. <laughs> you have stepped up to the plate. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Nina Simone, for me, she's my hero. You know, uh, she's she's uh, done so much heavy lifting all her life that I felt like it was necessary for me to um, uh, somehow provide a platform to continue that message that she was doing for so long, you know. So that that's really what I signed up to do when I said, sat down to write this musical of the life and legacy. Yeah. And and Rashad, I'll bring you into the conversation. Obviously, as a producer, this is a piece of work that you really felt you could get behind. Talk to me about um, the play and and, and, and and Leona's performance and how her performance, how her uh, rendition of, uh, of uh, Nina Simone basically sucked you in and decided you had to be a part of this project. Yes, absolutely. So I had the pleasure of meeting Leona about two and a half years ago, and I was really just taken by her interpretation of Nina's story, as well as her spirit and her in the way that she transforms into Nina. It's not an impersonation, it becomes Nina. And we really haven't heard Nina's story in this way, especially not in the theater. And so whenever I had the opportunity to, to join the team, it was really my honor to be able to help shepherd this project, help tell Nina's story, and to be able to really, really honor her legacy. And I said to Leona from the very beginning, this is bigger than both of us. Yeah. This is honoring a woman who really fought the, the same fight that we're fighting now, but she was one of the trailblazers you know, 50 years ago and we really need to do this justice. Yeah, and I want to just mention, um, Rashad, that you, she comes with some huge guns in terms of talent, playwriting and performing and singing, but you yourself, you, you got some uh, serious credentials as well. American Son, Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations, Betrayal, The Inheritance, Caroline, or Change, The Music Man. You've been out there on the great white way for a while, producing some pretty big uh, uh, projects, which says to me, when you saw this, you know what you're looking for and what you're looking at when you see it. I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been very blessed, but yes, I really, um, first and foremost, look for a good story and a good narrative. And I love the fact that this was a piece about an amazing black woman written by an amazing black woman and we don't often get a chance to tell our own stories mm -hmm. and so with leona and i partnering for this together you know we have something that's rare in a theater community you know a show being led by a black woman as a writer and a black male producer and mm -hmm. i'm really proud of that yeah so leona are there some things when people come to see this production? Because I think you said it, you're sort of channeling her. You become her. Are there some things that you think will surprise audiences when they see your uh, interpretation of Nina Simone? You know, I, I, I think so. I think so. Uh, 
I've been living with Lena uh, myself, you know, through the play and all things Lena for like uh, a decade of my life. And I find that even in rehearsal, I'm constantly surprised. Really? Even in rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And this world is still surprising me. And the fact that some of the, the lines that are, you know, uh, that I feel like is coming through me uh, is so necessary and so poignant from things that she experienced, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. Anything in particular come to mind as we're having this conversation? What What is, what is so compelling to you and that you are, about her and and what you're excited to be able to share with audiences and bring to life yeah you know i what i'm going about is is her transparency mm -hmm. uh as a black woman to be uh so transparent about her mental illness which is a topic that a lot of folks shy away from or or try to bury and Nina doesn't do that you know she's she's she lays her cards out there and i think that really is a gift that is a gift that she's giving to this audience well you're going to be introducing her to younger generations as well because many of them don't know her maybe they've heard some of the songs and maybe they know who it is but a lot of them don't um well, what do you want them to know about her sure like when i initially started to uh, uh write this play the first thing i wanted them to know was why she was so angry. And I really wanted to find those voices around her. You know, she was coined the angry black woman for so long, but you know, very rarely did people say, well, why, well, why? Well, why was Billy, you know, damaged goods? Why, why were all these people of, of our era and before our times, you know, struggling and, and going overseas and making home in France, you know, why, why? So I really wanted to answer a lot of those questions. Um, I set out to do that, but while I was doing that, I, I not only learned the, the answer to those questions, but I also learned that um, that I was angry, that I, I was learning a lot so much about myself as a black woman in America, as an artist. And so it's been the gift that keeps giving. I'm hoping that Little Girl Blue is going to pour into others. When they walk away from this piece, I'm really hoping that they feel compelled to um, take that anger and channel it into something. Yes. And Rashad, the play is, it's off Broadway. Um, previews start March 5th and it opens the 14th, right? That's correct. And now, am I going to jinx you if I say this? Are we hoping that we might see a move from off-Broadway to Broadway here? You are not jinxing, you're speaking life. Okay. <laughs> that, would hey. be, that would be a dream. You know, we, what we set out to do here and for Little Girl Blue is to really honor Nina's legacy and memory and spirit of a true warrior and somebody who fought and was a trailblazer for, for her people. And so we would love for this show to not only be a hit off Broadway, but to reach a broader audience and make it to Broadway in the near future. That would be fabulous. And let's hope we spoke it into existence right now. Littlegirlblue.nyc, that's one place to find tickets. And also you can find tickets at Telecharge, correct? That's correct. Yes, so nice to have both of you on, Leona Michelle, and I want to get your name, Rashad Chambers, Tony Award-winning producer. Thank you both for being with us. I can't wait to see the show. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Bookman, and here and now, we'll be right back.